So the apps we're presenting today all run in a web browser with no installations needed. Um, the great thing about that is they'll always stay up to date. Um, you can always access them anywhere at any time on any device, where that, whether that be a tablet or a PC or a phone, a uh, 10-year-old computer, um, a Mac. Uh, you don't need any special hardware to run these cloud apps. It also means that um, the data is stored on the cloud, and you can access that data from any of those devices as well. Um, no VPN in to get to that, no IT overhead required for these apps. So true cloud computing apps that the crunching, number crunching and the power is all driven from the cloud and streamed down to your device. So some of the apps, or the apps we are going to talk about today are these three, and X-Design will be the first one we look at. It is a browser-based 3D modeling solution. Uh, that will enable designers and engineers to create and review and evaluate 3D models through a very easy-to-use parametric modeling capabilities. And next, uh, we'll show X-Shape, and this is also browser-based. It's a subdivision modeling solution, and this enables industrial designers, engineers, artists, whoever, to create stylized, um, organic models, and faster and more easy, easily than uh, traditional parametric tools. And after that, we'll go through X Sheet Metal, which is what it sounds like. It's a parametric modeler for sheet metal componentry right inside your web browser. You can bring SOLIDWORKS models into the user interface and design fixturing and those sorts of things right around them. Now, there are other apps that are X apps, but these are the ones that we're focusing on today. So X-Design uh, on the 3D Experience platform offers a, a pretty major change in the way you design 3D components. Starting with the unique single modeling environment, it means you're no longer constrained by working with parts or assemblies like in your traditional design tools. I mean, instead, you can get right to work creating features and sketches that define your designs. Within X-Design, you'll also find familiar sketch and feature tools. You'll also find a ton of new ways to tackle your design challenges quickly. So some of this may look familiar to what you've done in the past, and that's a good thing. For example, uh, while you're inter interactively sketching profiles, X-Design will guide you in understanding which entities are geometrically constrained. As you add relationships between the entities to capture your design intent, the color of those entities will change, helping you define your sketches. Blue for underdefined, black for fully defined. X-Design is also always helping you in capturing your design intent by providing automatic relations as you sketch, horizontal and vertical, as you can see in this example. If you're continuously drawing the same diameter circle, X-Design recognizes this and automatically makes them equal to one another. Wherever you want to add more relations, you simply select two geometric entities, and X-Design will provide you with relations that make sense from a pop-up toolbar. X-Design also shades in the shapes of the contours within your sketches to let you know what shapes can ultimately be created with them. And this helps you to understand your overall design better while your sketches take on more complexity. To turn the 2D into 3D uh, is very easy in X-Design. Multiple options for controlling the final shape are available in every feature dialog, eliminating the need for different dialogs for different features. For example, the extrude command here can create features that are solids or surfaces. They can also be changed to add material or remove material at any time, so from an extrude to a cut, and even start completely new bodies all in a single command. Nearly all these features can be dynamically changed later as well to become a different feature in the future, all on the fly, without the need to start a different command. So quickly switching something in this case, like we showed from an extrude to a cut, or adding an extra little uh, extrusion onto the outside of that. Maybe you just created a chamfer, and then you decided you'd rather have a fillet instead. So just a simple edit and change the, the type of feature here. This eliminates the need to delete and recreate features like you may have had to do in the past. Very unparalleled flexibility here as you create and change your designs. 
as well as eliminating the need to learn different features for very similar tasks. As your designs take shape, the power of this single modeling environment becomes more than just creating new geometry. It also offers the flexibility of choosing which features make up entirely new components. X-Design allows you to select those features and create a new component from them on the fly. These newly created components can be used in other designs, of course, and managed with all the tools on the 3D Experience platform. In addition to creating parts on the fly, there's also, of course, a more traditional approach to building structured designs. You can just simply insert one component into another at any time. Finding your components is simple because all your engineering data is saved and managed on the 3D Experience platform. Simply search for the component you're looking for and then drag and drop it into the X-Design app. These components, of course, can then be moved and rotated as you desire with the dynamic movement triad. When you want to locate them precisely through mates, you simply just need to choose the entities of two different objects and X-Design will present you with an intelligent menu of possible mates. Choosing that mate type immediately moves the parts into the position and restrains them to one another indefinitely. We'll search for another part to add to this and then mate him into place as well, using a select other functionality to pick through a model without having to rotate. Also, if you're adding multiple instances of the same component, you can choose to use copy with mates instead. This not only adds additional instances of the component, but also adds the exact same mates as the original, which streamlines your entire process as well. Sometimes you may need to change the component used in a particular instance. For example, from a longer fastener to a shorter one. So replace component allows you to quickly search on the 3D Experience platform for the file you're looking for and choose a replacement. You can choose to replace all instances of the component if you desire. This will obviously gives you the flexibility to look at how different components will interface with your design. One of the most innovative aspects of X-Design is its design guidance functionality. This tool can generate geometry in a model based on loading conditions. You don't actually have to model the entire design, but only the pieces of geometry where loads and fixtures need to be applied, like this, for example. In order to generate geometry, you'll need to set up three key components, restraints, forces, uh, and a build volume for the size of the generated geometry. You can apply point loads, distributed loads, pressure, and torque loads. You can adjust the design volume to allow more or less room for generated shapes, and once these are set, you can click Generate, and X-Design does all the work generating the geometry. This is an iterative process, takes a few minutes to complete, and the results are tr some truly unique geometry designed specific for your model. Then, of course, you can use sketch features to finalize the geometry from the generated shape, using all the 3D modeling tools provided in X-Design. So here we're just gonna go in and rough in the shape we would like based off the suggested shape that the generative design provided for me. Then of course, it's just a matter of using the tools inside of X-Design to extrude and get solids off of this. If you were 3D printing, perhaps you could use the, the funky model that it gives you there, but uh, you're probably just gonna use that for some guidance. You can view various designs based on different loads using the same restraints. Uh, the load case manager will allow you to turn loads on and off, as well as vary the load mass. All in all, X-Design will change the way you think about CAD and structured assemblies. With its powerful single modeling environment, it's easy to use mating tools and the power of generative design to allow you to create models better and faster than ever on any device you choose anywhere you'd like to work. Todd, you should be the presenter now. Yep, it's coming through now. Thank you, Randy.
Okay. So XShape, also on the 3D Experience platform, this gives you a new way of creating stylish, sculptural, organic forms through subdivision modeling. So the features and tools in XShape are focused on allowing you to quickly create and refine these forms without having to rely on traditional surface modeling tools. And you can think of it as working with digital clay. So you begin by inserting primitive geometry that best represents uh, the form you're trying to create. You modify the primitive by adding or removing divisions and by changing the scale and proportions of these forms. And once your form is roughed in, you can further refine your design in a variety of methods. For example, any of the model's vertices, uh, the faces or edges can be selected and you can translate, rotate, and scale those in uh, a variety of combinations. And as you make changes to the form, X shape is preserving the continuity across the entire form, keeping all the faces smoothly translating into each other. Now you can further subdivide the model to give the form more granularity to create finer details and transitions. And so here, several loops are added in the Y axis of this model to prepare for some design elements that we'll be adding into the upper part of the form. And the flexibility of working in the cloud with these X apps is that you can insert CAD geometry as reference geometry. And that's going to help ensure that the forms we're creating meet the volumetric needs of the design. Furthermore, when you add the ability to insert and scale your concept sketches or photographs, that's gonna give you assistance in styling your design as well. Now you also have transparency controls, and that's gonna make it easy for you to see underlying components and background imagery to ensure that the volumes won't create interferences while you're shaping those forms. And when you're done with those models or the sketches or the photographs, you can hide those to improve your focus and think about what the next steps uh, that are required in refining this design. You also have a variety of selection filters that uh, help you only select the type of geometry you want. And that's gonna help eliminate the misclicks in your workflow. Um, selecting edge loop like I did here uh, is an ideal way to isolate geometry for making modifications to a specific profile. And what you saw me add there at the bottom is what's called a crease. And that's going to add sharper edges and transitions to the forms that you're developing. Now, as subdivision modeling is iterative, the process of making all these incremental changes can affect the size of the form. And one way to dial in more precise dimensions is by using this bounding box tool to show the form size and insert specific values for the X, Y, and Z axes. Um, you can scale that uniformly, or you can use a non-uniform uh, way to input those values. And vertices can also be quickly aligned to other lines, geometry, other bodies and gestures uh, that you can sketch on the fly. So here you can use your mouse or pen on a touch screen, whatever method quickly transforms those selected vertices. Now arc bends and flex tools are used to make broad or discrete stylized changes to your forms. And dragging the robot causes the selected geometry to translate based on the handle orientation and how far you're dragging it. You can also change the location and orientation of these feature controls uh, and the angle of the axes uh, that the sketch geometry is modified by, change the uh, direction that these uh, forms are modified in. You also have the ability to include uh, or create ordered geometrical sets. Um, these different sets create streams of history-based features. They're independent of other groups. Um, they can be used in a variety of ways. So one way is to explore different options for a design feature. For example, here, like exploring different handles. Um, and these different ordered geometric sets can be further refined or deleted if you decide you don't need them. So in this use case, hiding and showing the different ordered geometrical sets 
allows us to compare the options that we're considering for these handles. Another powerful tool is the symmetry tool, and this helps you maintain your design intent when you need to mirror uh, things on opposite sides of a plane. So here you can subdivide smaller regions or groups of regions that is going to allow you to create more discrete details. And with the symmetry tool enabled, those will also update instantaneously on the opposite side of the plane that you are working to. You also have alternate modes for modifying and influencing your form. For example, here I'm working with the cage manipulator. And this option gives you different perspective on the vectors of your geometry and that can help you create smoother forms. And finally, when you need other discrete forms, simply add and refine more primitive shapes. Subdivision modeling with X shape, uh, it's a new efficient way of creating complex forms. And thanks to the flexibility of the platform, anything you create in X shape can be further refined in other applications in the cloud like X design that Randy presented earlier. Or you can import them directly into SolidWorks for integration and further refinement. With X shapes intuitive and easy to use flexible workflows, you'll find that really your only limitation is your imagination. So X sheet metal, kind of kind of straightforward by the name of it. Um, we're gonna go back to that saw that Randy was looking at earlier, and you can see the bottom plate and the bevel adjustment are two separate pieces. Well, maybe I can save some money by making that out of a piece of sheet metal. So I'm going to insert a new feature set into the assembly. I'm going to grab the bottom face of the plate, and then I'm going to do a convert entities. Notice it actually got the holes too. So when you grab a face, it grabs the internal and the external. So here we're going to go ahead and start our first sheet metal feature, which is just a, a base shape. It's going to ask us about our material thickness, our bend radius, our decay factor, all those good things we need to know about sheet metal. Once you do that, it's going to ask for sketch orientation, if there's going to be any sketch offsets, that sort of thing. And we're on our way to starting a sheet metal part. So now looking at this, I want to be able to make sure that as I'm dragging the, the plate across a piece of metal, that that front edge doesn't catch. And if we just have a flat piece of metal, it's not going to do it. So what we're going to do is draw a line in there and draw a sketch bend. We call it a bend from flat. And 90 is a little sharp. We'll do that as a 150 degree angle. And you can see very quickly we drug that up. If we look at the bottom here, the toolbars at the bottom, unlike in SOLIDWORKS, the toolbars at the top. But all this, the features that we know and love about SOLIDWORKS sheet metal are here inside of sheet metal inside of X, X sheet metal. So our edge flanges, our minor flanges, our through holes, our, our folds, our unfolds, our closed corners, our patterns, our mirrors, all that's in there. So let's take a look going, for, going on to the next step here. We're going to grab the edges and we're going to bend those up a little bit too, put an edge flange on there. They call it a wall on edge. And you can see just by picking those, we can pick an edge or commit a sketch to that. Tell it if we want material to the inside or the outside. So now that material is bent up being the edge of that plate as well. So in the same footprint, but we got a nice bend there and some nice corner treatments. Now, I want to add and include the bevel adjustment on this piece of sheet metal. So it's going to be bent up. Well, when it's cut out of metal, it's got to be bent down. So we're going to create a cutout to accommodate that shape. And we'll just go with that size for right now. And now we're gonna create another flange based upon that bevel face there. So Randy was working with this earlier. I'm gonna grab one of the faces, I'm gonna do a convert entities, and then I'm gonna create an edge flange off that. I want that to go all the way to the top, top there. So I'm gonna drag the points over so those collide together. So those are all coincident now. So we've got a nice closed sketch, SOLIDWORKS, and X sheet metal always give us that nice closed contour effect there. And we're gonna create that wall on edge. We'll go with the 90 degree for right now. We'll go to the material and 
where you can come in and override the reliefs. So it's not going all the way to the edge. I wanted to have a little bit of bend radius there. So was the cutout big enough for us for that bevel? I don't think so, but let's go check it out. We can ask it to unfold. It's going to flatten that out, and you can see immediately it shows me the overlap, and it gave me an overlap detection. And I can use my measurement tool that's inside of that overlap detection to see how far I need to go. So I'm going to add just a little bit more to that to break that out to 70 millimeters. And now when I flatten it out, I should have more than enough real estate. So when I cut that on the laser cutter, and I've got a plenty, plenty enough room to bend that up. So you can see, still in the assembly environment, I can do this on an iPad. I can do this on my phone. I can do this on a 15-year-old computer. The nice thing about it is I'm designing components inside of a web browser. Now, if you're already using SOLIDWORKS today and you're using the platform for your data management, this is a great opportunity for those people that are those, those guys on the shop floor that need to design jigs and fixtures. They're able to come in not use a full seat of SOLIDWORKS, but design components around SOLIDWORKS assemblies. So giving that versatility of a parametric modeler designed anywhere at any given time and leveraging the platform is a pretty amazing ability. So now we did mention earlier, these are just three of the multitude of X apps that are out there. Some of those we are sharing with you today because we believe strongly that these are tools that you should be looking at. Other tools, we believe that there's development coming on those and they're, they're doing great, but we want to share these with you now. So if you have questions, feel free to contact us 